Roots Group is a British automotive manufacturer which dates back to 1913. Headquartered in London, England, many companies would spawn within the Roots Group. Companies such as, but not limited to, Huber, Commer, Hillman, Carrier, that's Carrier with a K, Singer, Sunbeam, Talbot. Also as a separate entity, but named the Roots Group, would manufacture engines. Fast forward to 1945, work would begin to build an unorthodox engine to fit under the floorboards of a lorry truck. The new engine would be called the TS-3. The project was headed by chief engineer Eric Coy. The Roots Company would acquire Tilling Stevens Company in the early 50s which was a British commercial vehicle manufacturer. Many believe that the TS means Tilling Stevens, but that's not 100% true. Even though the engine was originally planned for the Tilling Stevenson group and then it got bought out by the Roots Company in the 50s, TS stands for two stroke. The engine name would be TS3 for two stroke three cylinder. It was introduced in 1954, and this might be the weirdest engine that you've ever witnessed in your whole entire life. It's a three cylinder, but it has six pistons with a piston at each end of the cylinder. The piston crowns are faced inward. Adding to the intrigue of this engine, the pistons were driven by a single crankshaft instead of two. There was a short connecting rod followed by a huge rocker arm and then a smaller secondary connecting rod which attached to the piston. Also interesting to note that this engine was a two-stroke diesel. Two-stroke engines complete the power stroke within every revolution of the crankshaft. Usually less moving parts, oil and gas are mixed together or injected separately, whereas in a four-stroke engine, the power stroke happens on every two revolutions of the crankshaft. Oil and fuel are separate. Two-stroke engines also had to have a scavenging process of replacing exhaust gas in the cylinder with fresh air. The TS3 engine scavenging system was the use of a roots blower, which was mounted at the front of the engine. It was driven by a long quill shaft from chain drive at the rear of the engine. The quill shaft has been noted to be a point of contention, a point of failure of the engine if overworked. The roots blower supplies the air to the combustion chamber. Because the two pistons share the same cylinder, the piston on the right was considered the air piston and the piston on the left was the exhaust piston. The exhaust piston had a slight lead over the air piston. Exhaust ports opened and closed while the air entered through the air port. Air swirled as it entered the cylinder which also aided in combustion right before the pistons reached the inner dead center a mixture of fuel and oil was injected into the cylinder and then ignited by heat generated by the compression of the air. The pressure forces the pistons apart, resulting in the power stroke. As the pistons reach the end of the cylinder, exhaust port would open, releasing exhaust gases which caused a drop in pressure, which was called blowdown. The pistons open the airport, blowdown ends, air from the blower swirls into the cylinder towards the exhaust ports, scavenging the exhaust gases. This continues until the pistons have passed through the outer dead center position. The exhaust ports close and the piston starts a compression stroke. Then the cycle repeats until the engine is shut off. It's important to note that even though this engine seems really unorthodox today, it wasn't a brand new concept at the time. Salzer ZG9 was a two-stroke engine with the same concept. They built two-cylinder, three-cylinder, and four-cylinder configurations before the war. 200 cubic inch displacement TS3, three-cylinder, six-piston, opposed pistons. 3.261 liters. It was good for anywhere between 90 to 105 horsepower, 2400 RPM, 270 pound feet, or 366 newton meters around 1200 RPM, with a bore of three and a quarter inches and a stroke of four inches. Years this engine was used, 1954 through 1968. It could be found in the Comer and Carrier trucks. 
The engine was specifically designed to be mounted under the floor of the cab in these trucks. There was also a short-lived partnership with Lister to market these engines for industrial use, whether that be for a freestanding engine to operate equipment, generators, water pumps, what have you. And there was also a program in place for them to be used in various marine applications as well. It's important to note that this engine doesn't use camshafts or valves. The TS engine would get another cylinder added to more pistons as well, and it was called the TS4. That engine only made it into prototype stage, running 1.2 million miles, showing great promise for the future, but in 1968, Chrysler would buy the Roots Company and they would cancel the TS engine, mostly due to the emissions that were coming, and they wanted to go for more of a traditional piston engine. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather. Only one scenario today. If you had access to this engine, what would you use it for? Would you put it in a truck? Would you put it in a car? Would you put it in an airplane or would you use it as freestanding or possibly put it in a boat? Put it in the comment section what you would do with this engine if you had it. All right, now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section. We'll have your comment pinned to the top of it. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this one. This one was a requested engine. Which engines would you like to see featured on this channel this year? Put it in the comment section below. I'm interested to see what you guys come up with because I never even knew that this was even a thing. I didn't know that this was an engine. And this is honestly the weirdest thing that I've ever seen. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Until next time, toodaloo!